All right. Yeah, so my name's Eliza Merritt, and I'm a graduate student at the Department of Geography and Planning at Appalachian State University. And this is using interactive maps to understand the content of second order climate change beliefs, evidence from a small student sample. All right, so to really understand um, this study, we have to go a little bit into the background. And so what does support look for what does support look like for climate change today? Well, support for climate policies is higher than we've ever seen them. However, we still see stagnation in debate and action amongst, amongst climate and climate policy support. And so climate change communication arose as a way to address this stagnation. But how can we better communicate climate ideas to the public is the overarching question that we're asking ourselves. Well, interactive mapping shows great promise in communicating climate ideas to the public. So what are your first order beliefs? First order beliefs are one's own beliefs, and these are often driven by your demographics and identity, and they might, and they're strongly correlated with political affiliation. Some of these demographics include political affiliation, race, gender, and environmental attitudes, but it's increasingly possible that first order beliefs are only part of the recipe for belief formation and climate change belief and support. So my research questions are, how do students who hold a range of opinions exhibit second order beliefs in climate change? And which types of web map interaction are most valuable for updating second order belief? So what are second order beliefs? Well, second order beliefs are the beliefs about what others believe. So this is what you believe what, that other people believe. And these are heavily understudied as compared to first order beliefs, but they are potentially influential on weak climate policy and support. So there's a few things that you need to know about this. First, there's something called the false consensus effect. This is where you overestimate that the majority of people agree with you. So I believe in climate change, and I think that most people do too. You also have the pluralistic ignorance effect, where you assume that others support, that um, you support a policy, but assume that others don't. So I believe in climate policies, but I think that people on the other political spectrum of me don't. And that leads to false polarization, where people perceive more polarization than actually exists. So I believe in climate policies, and I think that most people do too, but the people who don't believe in climate policies really don't, and they don't want to work with us. But despite this, there's an underestimation of population level support for pro-climate policies. So how does this fit into cartography and eye tracking? All right, well, interactive maps allow users to manipulate maps based on their own top-down belief concerns and um, systems. And there's a crossover between climate change communication and web map interactions. So this is a map user study, which allows us to be up in front with participants and to see people's interactions. We have all of these mapping tools today, but we don't know what they really mean about, um, about the realm of communication and about what people's interactions actually mean about their belief systems. So we really want to address how and why and what the content of people's beliefs are. And what about eye tracking? Well, eye tracking has been used to measure different interactions with web content that tests assumptions and predictions of existing models. You can look at things like gaze fixation data, which is generally fixations, total visit duration. A fixation is where your eyes are stationary for at least 70 milliseconds, and it's where you're actually processing information. And total visit duration is how long you look at an element. And longer fixation times sometimes can indicate confusion or a really important map element. So let's look at this map that I coded. So I created this map using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS styling. I used the leaflet library for the map elements and CardoDB for the base map. And you can see that um, this particular one is showing the estimated percentage of adults who are worried about global warming. If you hover over a county, it updates the information box there in the top left. So this one is Moore County with 59% support for um, or people who are worried about global warming. You can also change the climate opinions that you want to see in the map at the opinions drop down at the upper left. You may also toggle county names on and off at the county names button down there at the bottom. And you can zoom in and out. And this was heavily influenced by the Yale climate opinion maps. Um, and we recreated it just to make sure that students were only focusing on North Carolina and were not distracted. All right, so some methods here. All right, so bear with me, there's a few different phases. So first, I recruited participants across um, the university. And I recruited very purposefully of a small student sample. I'm looking for about 30 participants. This is very typical in an eye tracking um, study but it's smaller for many other studies. Um, 
Anyway, so I recruited a bunch of participants for a range of climate belief and political affiliations. They then were sent a pre-map survey, and the, what we were trying to do there is um, quantify participants' beliefs. And we really wanted to know what they felt about climate change, and that allowed us to put people into a group of SASE. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the SASE survey in a few minutes. It also asked them demographic information, and it asked them to choose methods that they think are most important to addressing climate change. And it also asked them questions like, what percentage of people in the U.S. Um, do you think is worried about global warming or in North Carolina? They then came into an in-person session with me for the experimental portion. Before they saw any of the real distributions on the map, they answered a few questions for me. These were, to the best of your knowledge, what percentage of the U.S. population is worried about uh, global warming? What about in North Carolina? They also choose any county of their choice. And they also answer questions like, if you were talking to a group of people who are concerned about global warming in North Carolina, and you ask them why they believe what they did, what do you think they would say? If you were talking to a group of people who didn't believe in global warming or weren't worried about global warming, what do you think they would say? And that's really to monitor the content of their second order belief before they see the actual distribution of climate beliefs. And then they um, were asked to complete some map reading tasks. So first they would look at a static map for 30 seconds of the actual climate distribution. We'd ask them, what do you see? What's interesting to you? What are your initial impressions? And we would remind them of the percentages that they um, estimated for climate belief. They then completed map reading tasks. One was to compare two counties. One was to identify Watauga County and the percentage of support for a carbon tax there. And the last one was to rank three counties, lowest to highest, for percentage of support for expanding offshore drilling off the coast of the U.S. And then after each task, we asked ask them three questions. How did these estimates compare to your previ previous climate estimates in the state? Why did you choose the counties you did if they were able to choose a county of their choice? And please verbalize your thought process that you used while completing the map. And that was for map usability. And then during the post map, which they took immediately following, we asked them the same questions that they had seen in the pre-map phase. How worried are people in the US about climate change? How worried are people in North Carolina about climate change? We also asked participants how they felt during the experiment to understand more about how they felt about using the map and usability. And we had participants rank the map on usability metrics. All right, so let's look at some current outcomes. I want to be clear that this study is still in progress. So the pre-map responses are complete. However, the in-person sessions are not. Um, so these are preliminary. All right, so here's some demographics. Uh, you can see in that pie chart there, how would you describe your proficiency with technology? Most people have high or very high experience with technology. I also had higher rates of female, female participants and mostly first and third year students. When we asked them how frequently do you use maps on the internet, that's the one here on the left, most people use maps daily or weekly, which might indicate some familiarity of interactive web mapping amongst participants. We also asked them their self-identified political affiliation. Most of my, the students that have come in so far have been liberal, very liberal, or moderate. I did purposely sample to get a range of um, opinions, but so far I just haven't had any conservative students come in. This is the SASE survey that I mentioned a little bit earlier. What the SASE survey does is it quantifies people into a range from alarmed to dismissive on a climate scale. So if you're an alarmed participant, you have the highest belief in global warming, you're the most concerned and most made, motivated to address it. If you're dismissive, you have the lowest belief in global warming, you're the least concerned and least motivated to address it, and you might fall somewhere else in between. This, these questions were also asked on the pre-map survey so that I could group my participants later. And so the questions asked for the SASE survey are how important is the issue of global warming to you personally? How worried are you about global warming? How much do you think global warming will harm you personally? And how much do you think global warming will harm future generations of pop people? So here are my SASE survey, breaks, sur SASE survey breakdowns. Um, you can see that most of my participants are alarmed or concerned, and a few of them were cautious. And this is higher than the national averages, which might be explained by the fact that I'm sampling from a college campus that tends to be a more um, liberal-leaning uh, population. We also asked them how they believe that we should address climate change. And they had the opportunity to choose from this list, and they also had an opportunity to make 
open-ended responses. And you can see that in dark blue, regulation of industry is so far the number one solution. Dark orange, government investment in energy is the second. And pink, binding international, and, uh, international agreements. For the individual responses, the most common words we saw were also government investment, but these were often paired with accountability, sustainability, education, and universal basic income. This is where we asked people before they saw the distribution, this was completely off of their own estimates, how do people most feel about global warming? In the US and in North Carolina, you can see that most participants think that most people are somewhat worried or not very worried about climate change. You can also see that there is a slightly higher um, skepticism in beliefs of North Carolina people over the US population. So more people thought that there are more people who are not very worried in, the North, in North Carolina than in the US. We also asked them to describe their views on climate change and climate policy. And the reason that we asked them this, these qualitative type questions is because we want to show that people with similar political beliefs, so two people who might be moderate on the political scale, might have different ideas about why we should support policy or how we should address climate change. And it also shows that climate change and policy are relative issues to people. So for example, at the bottom you can see, it's a low yield issue for me as an individual to invest emotional bandwidth into. That's what governments are for. All right, so let's look at some metrics from the experiment. And these are going to be eye tracking metrics. So this is the map that they looked at for the percentage of people who um, support carbon taxing on corporations. And you can see that people are burning a hole in Stokes County. Stokes County has the lowest metrics of belief across all three metrics that I measured. Um, and you'll see this consistently, actually, that people are looking at it. It tends to be a different color in the Choropleth map as well, which could explain it. Um, and this was from when we, this eye tracking metric is from when we asked them to give any initial impressions of the map. This is the first time they've seen it. But you also see that there's a heavy focus on the western half of the state. This is for the support of the expansion of offshore oil and gas drilling off the U.S. coast. You can see that People aren't really burning holes in Stokes this time, um, but that's because it actually fades away in this one because they have the highest support versus the yellow and orange, which is the lowest support. Um, and you can see that, again, the heavy focus is on the legend and in the title. And that's actually really good news for us as map designers. Basic map elements um, like the title and legend and people focusing on it shows us that people aren't intuitively using this map. And then this is for the amount of people who are worried about global warming. You can see, again, Stokes County is in, um, being highlighted. And you can also see that people are looking further towards the blue spectrum on the legend, which is also, again, good news in showing us that people are using the legend properly because this is the most blue by far. So let's look at some post map results. Remember when I was just showing you these same exact graphs where most people felt that most other people were not very worried or somewhat worried about climate change in the US and in North Carolina? Well, after seeing the actual distributions of belief, we see this, that actually most people now feel like people are somewhat worried or very worried in the US and in North Carolina, which actually shows that people are changing their, updating their second order beliefs. They're changing what they think of other people based off of seeing the actual distribution of belief in the state. We also asked them if they expected people's beliefs to be more or less like their own. 60% expected others' beliefs to be less like their own, and 40% expected others' beliefs to be more like their own. This actually goes against the literature that says that you believe that most people think the way that you do. So it goes against the egocentric bias. But it actually supports the pluralistic ignorance effect, where people are, um, that people assume low support for climate policies that they don't agree with. Again, you have to remember that all of my participants were alarmed or concerned about climate change. We also asked them if they were surprised by the maps of others' beliefs that they saw. 80% of participants were surprised by the maps that they viewed, while 20% were not and are felt that their estimates were very actu accurate to actual distributions. This agrees with the literature that people are inaccurate at guessing others' levels of beliefs. But most people were surprised by levels of support that they weren't expecting. So initially, people are underestimating belief. And then when they see actual distribution, they're surprised, which suggests that people are updating their second order beliefs. 
I'm now going to look at a little bit of our map usability metrics. You can see um, using a Likert scale slider bar on the post map survey from one to five, so far we're having pretty good usability metrics. These four and 4.7 show that people are finding that the map is not unnecessarily complex or that they wouldn't need technical help to understand the map. You can also see that, oh, sorry, the four, the four and the 4.7 are I would like to use this map frequently and I thought the web map was easy to use. The low ratings 1.38 and 1.25 is that I found the map unnecessarily complex and I would need the support of a technical person to be able to use this map. So, so far that's good news for us. We also asked them the most common emotions out of, of, out of a list of 200 most common emotions, they chose which emotions they felt while interacting with the map. And this is where, the reason we did this is because cartography user studies have neglected the emotional values of users when interacting with maps and relevant to people's beliefs. And it's increasingly evident that your emotions are very much part of your belief formation. So the most common emotions selected have been satisfied, accomplished, calm, curious, and relaxed. We also asked them what map elements they felt were most helpful. 29% felt that mousing over features to highlight and to update the info box were most helpful. 29% felt that the data visualization and the Cora Plus symbology was most helpful and the interface design as well. I also had multiple participants ask me if there was a feature to search for county names. And there isn't right now, but that might be something that I add in the future. So a couple conclusions. Participants are likely to choose their home county when interacting with the map. This actually should, supports the egocentric bias when completing map tasks that you're most likely to interact with it in a way that makes the most sense to you and is about, I'm sorry, about you. Participants so far are updating their second order beliefs on climate change after viewing the map. And participants are overall surprised by others' climate opinions and do not estimate opinions correctly or accurately. Participants are also more likely to think others' beliefs will be less like their own. And then a few about cartography and usability. Participants are finding the map overall simple to use and intuitive, which is supported by those um, eye tracking metrics that we saw during the experiment phase. And participants are finding the mouse over and choropleth visualization helpful to use. So later, the next steps after completing some more data analysis is I will look into the content of people's beliefs during the experimental phase. I have hundreds of minutes of audio recording that talks about, that asks the participants to talk about what the actual content of their second order belief is. So we'll look into that. And we're also going to look at, to see if different SASE groups amongst participants interact with the map differently, use common diction when talking about climate opinions of others, if they um, have similar beliefs, etc. So um, if there's any questions, that's, uh, that's that.